So the next time we meet in lab, you are going to extract some of your DNA. And how cool is that? You have this molecule that makes you who you are. And it lives in every one of your cells, and you're actually going to be able to take it out and take a look at it. And then if you want, you can maybe take a little bit of it with you. Well, you take it with you every day anyway, but I mean, you could take it with you outside of your body, which is kind of weird and creepy, but whatever. Um, so the, the reason we will do this, and one of the, the things about d DNA isolation that's, that's very relevant, is that it's used all the time. Uh, whether it's DNA profiling or cloning or diagnosing genetic diseases, sequencing your DNA, making genetically modified organisms, or testing uh, the environment or testing unknown organisms perhaps for lethality or for, for uh, danger. Uh, the first step of all of these processes is to actually get the DNA out of the cells that it's living in or out of the viruses. So this technique that we'll be using is actually used all the time and it's not much different from the way we're going to do it. We probably won't be necessarily as careful as we could be because our goal is just to see the stuff, not to actually do anything with it. Um, but it's the same process that we'll be following. So uh, just to go back quick to freshman biology, uh, you may recognize this picture as a picture of a cell with its interior sort of cutaway looking at the insides. There's a lot of organelles there that you might recognize the names of. We'll look at those later on in the year, in the semester. Um, but we're mostly going to be interested in the, the two membranes, the outer membrane of the cell, which is called the plasma membrane, and then the inner membrane around the nucleus, which is called the nuclear envelope. And uh, the reason we're so focused on those two is because we have to get through them. We have to break them open so that we can get the DNA out of the nucleus. That's our goal. Okay. Uh, you are going to very simply uh, harvest some cheek cells. We're going to use the epithelial cells in the lining of your cheeks, and we're just going to use some water, uh, drinking water, to get that out. You'll kind of scrape some of those off with your teeth, but we'll get to that. Uh, we're going to add something called a lysis buffer. The word lysis means to break, and so a, a buffer is something that prevents the pH of a system from changing. We, DNA is very sensitive to changes in pH. And so if we want to uh, get the DNA out and make it stable, uh, we have to make sure the pH doesn't change, the acidity or the basicity doesn't change. So the buffer part of that um, prevents changes in pH, and the lysis part will break through membranes. Then you're going to digest the sample. Now digest, you think of digesting as happening inside your stomach and intestines. But all digest means is enzymes go to work breaking down molecules. That's all it means, to break them down. And you're going to do this in, in a test tube and you're going to use a special type of enzyme called a protease to do that. And we'll get rid of proteins with that. And then finally you're going to get the DNA to precipitate or clump together by using cold alcohol in a very high salt environment. And I'll explain why we're doing each of those as we go. Uh, there'll be two stations. There'll be a common station and there'll be a, a constant temperature water bath at 50 degrees Celsius there and some ice cold 95% ethanol. Uh, and it needs to be ice cold because you can't do this with warm alcohol, so we'll have it on ice. And then at your stations at your table, here are the materials that you'll be using, 15 milliliter conical tubes with uh, caps, and those will have some drinking water in there for the mouthwash for the, for the collection of cells. Uh, a micro test tube that has the word PROT on top, which is what the protease is going to be sitting in. It's rehydrated, so it's dehydrated, and then we'll add some water and get it rehydrated. I'll take care of all that. Uh, a 15 milliliter tube with some lysis buffer, and some plastic transfer pipettes, a micro test tube holder, a permanent marker, a beaker for trash, and then there will be a station if you would like to make the necklace to contain a little bit of your DNA if you're kind of like that. Uh, there will be a station to put those together. And then I'll have a little quick guide with the steps of the uh, of the procedure on it, but I do want you to jot down these as part of your summary. Jot down the steps that we're going to take, which we'll go through now. So the first thing you're going to do is take your 15 milliliter tube, it'll have about 3 milliliters of drinking water in there. You'll take the marker and you'll put your initials on there so you can keep track because all of the tubes look exactly alike. You're going to do step number two. Now step number two is the most important step for success. You have to gently chew the insides of your cheeks for 30 seconds. Please do not draw blood. It doesn't help. It actually makes things harder to see and it's probably painful. And then take the water from the tube, 
And I promise you, these tubes are sterile before I put some drinking water in there, just from the water fountain. Take the water, swish it around your mouth vigorously for another 30 seconds. If you don't do steps two and three long enough, you're not going to have enough cells, and you're not going to be able to see your DNA. I would also recommend that you not eat immediately before class, because bits of food will end up in this tube. And honestly, it's kind of disgusting. So uh, if you have to eat breakfast, you know, eat it earlier before class. Don't eat mod 2. Uh, once you're done swishing around for 30 seconds, you spit, we say expel, the liquid back into the tube because it will have all the cells in there. Now, you're going to break open the membranes, and so you're going to get the lysis buffer. You're going to add 2 milliliters using your transfer pipette. You're going to add 2 milliliters of lysis buffer. You're going to put the cap back on your tube, and you're going to gently, not shake, you're going to invert, turn it upside down invert your tube five times. You need to watch and look at look for changes. Write them down. Take some photos of this if you have a camera on, in your phone. Take some pictures of each step along the way. Once you've, uh, you've done that, you're going to get a tiny little bit, five drops of protease. Now, we'll talk about why we're using protease, but you're going to drop that in from the tiny little micro tube. You're going to put your cap back on, gently invert it a few times. Okay. Then you need to incubate. And incubate means you need to heat it up and let it sit at a higher temperature for a little while so that all the little protease enzymes can do their job. So you're going to put it in the 50 degrees Celsius water bath and you're going to leave it there for 10 minutes. While it's doing what it's doing, you can jot down some observations, you can sort of gather your materials for the next step. So uh, why are we doing each of these? It's important that you understand why we're doing this. Uh, the first step, cell collection. Well, uh, it's you can get DNA out of any cell in your body, but uh, the easiest ones to get are the epithelial cells lining the mouth because they, they slough off very easily. And just chewing the insides of your, of your cheeks and then using the water to swish them around, you get tons of those cells. But you've got to have enough of them, so you really have to do those two steps for quite a long time. Uh, the lysis buffer. What's the purpose of the lysis buffer? So the lysis buffer is two components. The first is something called 50 millimolar tris HCl, which has a very high pH. And the second is 1% something called SDS. Now the SDS stands for sodium dodecyl sulfate, but that's not important. This is very long molecule over here on the right. Um, all it is is a detergent. And the nice thing about detergents is they can break through membranes. And so that long chain of CH2s that you see there kind of like wiggles its way into the membrane. It breaks it open. The buffer, the tris buffer, keeps the pH a little higher than normal biological pH, just a little bit. So DNA stays stable at a higher pH. And that's why we use those. Protease. Protease ends in ASE. We know what that means. That means protease is an enzyme. And the first part of its name, prot, means it acts on proteins. Protease destroys proteins, chews them up. That's what digestion is. Uh, it's important that we do that because we need to get the DNA out. And DNA won't be able to clump together so that you can see it unless there's enough of it. So the protease helps to increase the amount. Now, there's already salt mixed into the protease, and we need salt. Specifically, we need the sodium ions, which are positively charged ions. The DNA has these phosphate groups. We know that, the sugar phosphate backbone. Tons and tons of phosphate groups. The phosphate groups have a negative charge to them. When, when we add the sodium chloride, now if we, if we just left the DNA without salt, the negative charges of the phosphate groups would repel each other. The molecules would never clump together. So adding the sodium ions neutralizes those negative charges and allows the DNA to clump together when we add the alcohol. So here's a little sample. These are a couple of nucleotides joined by their phosphate groups, and you can see the oxygens and the phosphates are negative. The sodium ions will gather around those and neutralize them, allowing the DNA to clump together. DNA doesn't dissolve in alcohol. It does dissolve in water. Your cells are mostly water. But in alcohol, it doesn't. It tends to clump together. We use cold alcohol so the molecules slow down, and they will sort of stick together and precipitate. And what it'll look like is sort of little strands of cotton, fluffy sort of spider web looking strands. Uh, you'll also see some little bubbles that will help to bring the DNA uh, up towards the top of the tube. That's just microscopic oxygen. Um, it'll, it'll help to help you to see it and find where the DNA is. 
Once you've incubated your tube for uh, about 10 minutes, you're going to slowly add about 10 milliliters of cold alcohol. You want to hold the tube at a 45 degree angle so you kind of layer the alcohol on top of what's already in there. And let it sit. Okay, it's going to take you a few uh, pipette, pipettes full to get the alcohol into your tube. Just let it sit for five minutes and watch it. Specifically, I want you to look at the interface, the boundary, where the, all of the stuff that was in there meets the alcohol. There's a, there, you'll see a little boundary. It'll be faint, but you'll be able to tell where the alcohol is and where the other stuff is. And at that boundary is where you should start to see the DNA um, precipitating. If it doesn't work, you can gently tilt the tube on its side and then turn it upright about 10 times until the alcohol phase and the water phase have mixed well but you don't want to shake it again you don't want to break up these DNA clumps uh, and you'll be able to see the DNA a little bit better than that okay um, take pictures again write down your observations take pictures of what you see it's very important that you get your data the only data you have here is your observations qualitative observations okay Finally, if you uh, happen to decide that you want to make a little vial uh, and take some of your DNA with you, uh, I will have that set up. You'll just transfer a little bit of the fluffy strands into the vial. It's actually made out of plastic now. They changed it. It used to be glass. Um, these don't break. And you can just put a little uh, screw cap on top, and I have a little lanyard you can use, a little piece of uh, a cord that you can make a necklace out of. Um, and it'll last forever. Uh, well, for years anyway. If it starts to dry out a little bit, you can always just open the cap, put a little bit more uh, alcohol in there, and it should clump together and stay. I don't know what you would do with it, but hey, go nuts. Uh, so make sure you've written these steps down. Create a little procedure uh, for this so that you know what to do. And uh, come in and take a look at your DNA.